Hello everybody, it's me Akbar, also known as Dave and in this video course I'm going to talk about writing task 1 pie chart. So this is going to be the main focus. Before moving to main details, I would like to show you what are you going to learn in this video course by showing you the outline. First, I'm going to explain about understanding the questions where you should what you should do when you first time receive the question and what is the main approach. And then I'm going to explain selecting the key features. And in case you don't know what the key feature means, I would suggest you to watch previous videos about video course about uh, pi, uh, bar chart and line graph writing task one series. And then we will move to writing an overview. And finally, I'm going to give a bit of explanation about how to link the ideas when you're writing the body paragraph. And finally, I will add some advice that what you should do next in case you are preparing seriously for IELTS. All right, now let's have a look of understanding the question. So before that, I would like to have your attention to the question. So now, what do the pie charts show? So just pause your computer screen and think about the, all the key details and information, what the actual picture shows you. So I want you to visualize what is there and what is the main picture shown. Well, that shows the, uh, the comparison between the breakdown and the number of full-time and sandwich students and part-time students. All right, so if you still think it is confusing, I'm going to give a bit of more in-depth explanation about what it actually means. So this is the title. This is the title. And this is the one part chart title. This is chart is about full-time sandwich students. And another part is part-time students who enrolled in the UK university during the time period 2002 and 2003. Well, the first thing that you need to ask to yourself is is it a comparison or is it a trend or is it both? So be depending on that you are going to direct your attention how to write the remaining paragraph. The second question you should ask is which tense should I use? Should I have to use the past simple or present or future or any other tense that is required? That's the first key, the critical components that you must think when you first time receive the question. Based on that, you will direct the entire essay. Because if it's comparative, it's going to be slightly different. When it's trend, it's going to have a different style. And when it's both, it's going to be combination of both styles. And also, the tense is very essential because the whole essay you're going to write in that tense. If it's in the past, as you can see, this is in the past. Okay, but one more question. That's why I'm saying it is relevant, whether it is trend or comparison. So if it's past, as you can see, it's 2003, it's past year, then you can use past symbol. Or you can also use present simple as well. Why? So the main reason is because there is no trend. Why there is no trend? Because we don't know any change over time. This is only the data in one year between 2002 and 2003. We have no idea, we have no information given the change over a period of time. So if there's no timeline is given, then there is no way to use any tense. That is why you should always 
find out whether it is comparison or the change over time or trends. Based on that, you have to select the approach. Should I use the past tense, present, perfect or the future? So if it's a trends, then you have to choose. We'll have to decide what tense to use. But in this case, it is just a comparison essay. You just have to compare. And it is up to you whether you to use present or the past. Because if you use a present, fine, you're just saying the current picture. Your perspective is in just current, uh, just comparison only. So you just factually compare. If you use the past, still it's okay. All right. Now, and next part is the details, breakdowns. So have a look at this explanation. First degree, are the undergraduate and postgraduate. This is the key information that shows in the illustrations. So this is it. You should be very careful. And these numbers represents the amount of students or applicants who enrolled, who studied. All right, that is the key component and the titles. So full time and part time. I hope you already know what does it mean. But the you might have a question. What does the sandwich actually means? Well, just an extra information. The sandwich is the type of um, way, uh, the method of studying in the UK actually, mostly, where you just, uh, the students study two years academically and then maybe in between they have got practical work experience. It could be, it could last to up to a year. And then they, uh, they continue academic years again. So like half, uh, period uh, study academically and in between work experience and then finally finish up with academic study as well like maybe write a dissertation or something as well so just an extra information okay now I hope you understand the overall structure so that is the things that you must uh, not ignore when you first time receive the questions all right now let's move on to selecting the key features. So how can you select the key features? All right, in case you don't know what the key feature means, key features are the one which is the most significant and the, the more important to mention. Okay, here we are not talking about unnecessary extra details because in your writing task one, the rubric deliberately specifically mentions select the key features select and report the key features and make comparison where relevant that is the rule so you must not write everything a lot of students keep writing too much details and that is wrong you are, haven't you shouldn't or you mustn't write a lot of detail unless it is the key feature all right, now let's make it again a bit interactive. I want you to pause the screen again, press the pause button and think about uh, what three key features you can write about this illustration. So think about it. Once you thought, write it down and then unpause it and check with the answers. So here's the answer. So first key feature is there were many full-time students than part-time students. Well, if you look at the the charts, uh, full-time in sandwich, so generally full-time, if you add up all these numbers, all these numbers together and add up all another part charts numbers, which is part-time, and you compare that's there the significant differences so full-time in the full-time there are more students compared to part-time students so that's a definitely worse to mention in your essay next one the majority of full-time students were taking their first degree where the minority of part-time students were taking their first degree okay that's also a critical point so if you look at the first degree 
when it comes to full time, it is the majority compared to the other two. This is the number. It's quite a lot. But when it comes to the part time students, look at the blue slice of the pie chart here. It is the lowest one, the minority. That's again very comparative and a very essential and vital to mention as a key feature. And the third one is other undergraduates were the minority of full-time students, or part-time students, they were a much more significant group. All right, now let's have a look at the part-time student, which is the, I mean, other undergraduates among the part-time. Look at the red slice, it is almost a half. Well, that's the largest, the majority here. On the other hand, or but, it is the lowest, the, the minority slice when it comes to full-time and sandwich students. So I think that is the critical key features that you must write in your task one essay. So what is the takeaway from this lesson? Let's say once you have decided uh, the key trend, whether you should talk write about the trend or comparison, and then second you have identified you should write about in the past, present, or with tense to use. The third critical point that you should do, you should write down as a note key features that you need to mention in your writing task one. So I always recommend to my students make a plan write down the key features first and then start writing an essay because if you write immediately it is not going to be very tidy and you will you might get out of track maybe gone too much detail so it is worth to write the key features first you don't have to write as the full like uh, in this illustration you just have to use a shortcut. Some of the, like, as long as you understand your words, your notes, that's sufficient. Just write small keynotes, keywords, that what you're going to write. It's like a plan. All right, so we have done of selecting key features. Now is we should move to next part. So obviously after that, once you have just done the selecting the key features, what you should do is you have to uh, write an introduction first and I'm not going to explain about writing introduction in this series because uh, I've explained a lot in case you don't know how to write a proper introduction please you can watch first video lecture about the line graph and where I've explained already how to write introduction it is not worth to uh, explain it again because introduction is the same the rules is the same no matter what type of charts related task one question are there. So once you uh, you just have to spend paraphrasing the rubric and just done be done with the introduction. Once you've done, next part is going to be writing an overview. So how to write an overview? Let's have a look again. Now this time I'm going to ask the question to you. Uh, as well. So, well, I need you to pause again and think about what keywords, key features that I you can write as an overview. And reminder for you, overview should be only uh, one or two statements and that statement should mention that uh, the, the significant information or general information which is suitable not only one chart but both charts it is not only about pie charts no matter what types of charts you have bar charts or line graph you must write one or two statement which is general as an overall to mention and relevant to all data what one statement or two statement you can mention which is relevant for all of it that is going to be an overview 
All right, so let's have a look which is the key feature as an overview. That is the first one, I guess. It's a full-time and sandwich students were more than part-time students. The whole chart is about full-time and part-time comparison between two. So we don't have to go in detail about first degree, other undergraduate and postgraduate. That is not an overall. The overall picture is about where there are more students, either in full-time or sandwich and part-time. That's the main component and that could be mentioned as a general overview All right so I'll re-mention again when you write an overview make sure you write something some statement which is suitable which is relevant for entire data entire illustration not one not two or not even three which is relevant for all and there are another thing you could support with there was an approximately twice the number of former than the later. All right, this is the support. You can add support or you can add exception for an overall. So why this is the support? This is also honorable, uh, like important to mention because if you compare the numbers, it is the twice. The full-time students and sandwich students are twice or maybe two times more than part-time students. So that is the two statement which could be mentioned as an overview because it is relevant for entire illustration or charts right so uh, we mentioned again so we have write, written introduction we have got something to write and as an overview now it is time to move the body parts so I'm not going to go in detail about how to write a body part but I'm going to mention how to link the body part so and in this uh, section you're going to learn how to link ideas the critical ideas well there are many other ways advanced way of linking ideas but I'm going to show you the basic All right so in the body parts and in the overall an essay we need four critical sections which is essential to include and you must include if you want to get a good result First is a giving data. No matter what, you must include some sort of data in your task one essay. What I mean by data? Data means numbers, percentages, quantities, or the dates. Date means maybe if it's a trend, it shows the change over a period of time. That is called data. So when you want to mention about the data you can use this word in terms of the figures comma and mention this a had this percentage or this number at this period okay this is the how you can link the data now next as i've already mentioned about writing overview you know what to mention in overview but you must know how to link so it is always a good idea to start with these phrases from an overall perspective comma and continue mentioning whatever you have got as a key feature well there are many other ways and styles to use the linkage word but this is just a basic you must learn at least two or three um, as, a, as a memory you should learn by heart and memorize them because you are going to need it in when you're writing an overview Alright, next is a comparison. Why well, I've included comparison? Because usually you will have uh, either uh, comparison types of essay or comparison and trends most of the time. It is very, it is rare, I mean, to come across the question which asks you only trend or change over time related questions. So you must have at least in your the vocabulary treasure you must have at least one linkage words about comparison so basically you can say in comparison to and mention some data and then finally you need to give some details this is the body part when you move to body part you must give the details what I mean by giving details you shouldn't give 
unnecessary details. You should give details only for selected key features. So linking words to give more details, you can use more specifically. So as you can see, there are, these are the four major components that you must include no matter what type of writing task one questions as long as they are charts or diagrams. So first, you must mention something about overview, general idea. You must include comparison unless it is only trend and it is not relevant to compare. Okay, and you must include the data that is compulsory on all type of question, no matter what. And also, you have to give details, and especially when you are in the body part. So these four components must be in your list. All right, now let's have uh, another exercises. So to be more in, to, to make it more interactive. Now I'm going to add the question here. Have a look at the whole read this chart uh, related uh, intro, I mean overview and the detailed body part and fill the gaps from the information from the linkage words on the left. So which one of them you could match? to one to four and fill the gap. So again, pause your computer, spend time reading it and add which is switchable on which part. Okay, now I'm going to show you the results. So let's start by I'm going to read and explain. Looking at the pie charts all right, that's going to be a first from an overall perspective. Okay, this is you can just learn it by heart the whole entire phrase. Looking at the pie chart, looking at the bar, just replace the word pie chart with bar or line. Looking at the line graph or bar charts or table from an overall perspective and comma and give whatever the key feature you found. The key information that's sent out from a comparison of the two is that there were far more full-time and sandwich students than part-time students for the academic year 2002 and 2003. And in terms of the figures, see, it just means like the candidate wants to give in details as a, as a figures. There were approximately twice the number of the former than the later. Right, as you can see, this is very neatly and accurately given information. Looking at the pie chart more specifically, all right, this is also you can learn. You can put, uh, you can write it down on your vocabulary list that you should learn it by heart. You can re literally use it no matter what kind of chart is that. Looking at the bar chart, line graph or table, more specifically, comma, and continue whatever in the list. The breakdown of different types of students were also very different for full-time students and sandwich students. And finally, in comparison to part-timers. So this is the word to relate comparison. Why I'm mentioning comparison to because most of the students tend to use comparative or superlative like more than better, bigger than something, but this is a slightly different way of connecting the ideas. All right, I hope you got it. You understand how to link ideas and uh, it could be useful, I thought. All right, now you have learned uh, not all of it, but this is the essential elements that uh, you could use when you're writing task one pie chart and after this video lesson you can start literally practicing uh, writing essay questions but what I recommend you guys is if you're learning alone yes these tutorials are going to be very helpful for you to understand but you need to if you're serious if you need to get real improvement you just need a tutor who can help you and give you feedback 
especially when you're doing writing task and um, the speaking because you you without them it's just difficult to make a progress but for you I can recommend you the Quizlet series if you're familiar what the Quizlet is you can just join the Quizlet uh, website and the cards and I've got my own account search the user under my name Akbar underscore battle of with capital letters IELTS and you can find the cards that I've created for writing, for speaking, for IELTS related vocabulary that you might find quite useful. And then <laughs> if you want to have a more exercises and feedback services you can just join our online classroom series you just have to contact our administrative department or you can write uh, you can search on telegram iprofibot where you can register and you can have access to our google classroom content where you can practice questions quizzes and exercises you can interact with me i myself personally going to check your essays and give you feedback and you're also going to have some webinars weekly about uh, your uh, I mean general review of each type of questions so thank you very much for your attention and stay safe out there and uh, good luck in your study and your preparation for IELTS I hope you find this lecture quite helpful and if you need any assistance, any questions, please feel free to write on the comments below and don't forget to press like button or subscribe our channel. I would really appreciate it because you're going to help so our algorithm to make this lesson uh, visible to most of the audience. So thank you again and happy learning.